Good morning everybody, welcome to another round of coffee and questions. What are we going to talk about today? Well, I'm going to take you through some basic tips and tricks on using that Badger sprayer. I got one or two comments, uh, one related to the other really, uh, the comments in one of the forums where somebody goes, that seems pretty cool, the little airbrush. I've seen you've posted a couple of videos about them. It seems real handy, but um, there's clogs up a lot, they're having issues with it. And I said, look, um, I'll do another video as soon as I can and I'll show you because I just bought another one actually. Uh, it's right here. This is the Badger 250-2. Now, this is a replacement for one that I already have owned that failed on me because I ruined it by submersing the whole thing into lacquer thinner and I didn't realize that that would damage it in the long run, but it did. So let's open this up. Let me talk to you about it. We'll do a demo and I'll answer your questions on cleaning it up. So give me just a sec. Now, it doesn't say a whole lot on this box. Now, what it takes you through on the back of this is how to hook it up to pressurized cans of air. I don't do that, I don't use those for that. I bought a better braided um, airline. It has a filter in it, I'll show all that to you in a little bit. So I don't use the parts up here and I don't use these aerosolized cans. I think, yeah, it works. I've seen YouTube videos where it works. I think it's an expensive way to go. I wouldn't do it. Even if you have a little pancake compressor at home, you're going to save money and it will work much better and more consistently. So anyway, let's open this up. Here's the airline. It's, uh, it's cheap. It's flimsy but uh, it'll work, okay? And I used it when I first got it a long time ago and it'll work fine. But I replaced it as soon as I could with a good braided line. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. Here's the braided line. It's a nice one. It cost me more, yeah, but it's much more durable. It's nicer. And Badger will also sell them to you on the website or you can get them from most any vendors. There's a lot of them. There's airbrush.com, stuff like that. But I also bought a disposable filter. Now, I my compressed air runs through a big canister filter. It's made by Astro. And I put this here too, just as added protection, right here at the very end, the business end, before it goes into this braided line, before it gets out to my gun. This way it keeps contaminants, moisture, particles, and crap out of it, and everything else. Now, I've had really good luck with that setup and doing it that way, so that's my preferred method. Now, getting back to the Badger here, here's the cap that goes on the aerosol can another part that I do not use. So what did that leave me with? Well that left me with the single action Badger brush, airbrush. Little trigger here, it has a spring loaded tip that goes up and down, there's a jar that screws on and off, there's a clear plastic tube in here. That's the pickup tube. Okay, so they call that the pickup tube the trigger mechanism, this little round wheel here, you just push it up and down and it shoots air out this way and it draws fluid up from the container to the tip and blows it out. Okay, that's all there is to this single action spray gun. Now, Badger makes several types. They make a 250, that's what this is, the 250 series. They make the 350 and, and they make the 50-259. Now, that is the same kind of airbrush, but it's a bigger round cap on it to accommodate deeper jars like this right here. This is a bigger, deeper jar. It's got lacquer in it right now. These are the standard, you know, more normal sized uses on like Badger 250. So this works, but this holds a small amount of fluid. You can buy the larger jars, which are right here and screw that onto here and you can hold more fluid. And they're not that costly. So it depends on the project sizes that you're doing and the projects, but they sell the jars and they're not that expensive. You can go to badger.com, take a look. You can also go to airbrush.com and I've bought stuff from them and take a look. 
the accessories are not that expensive. Um, the gun was not that expensive. Um, I'll leave it in the link below. And I've done videos on this, a couple of them already, on how nicely this works. So, um, I'm sorry, I made a, I misquoted, it's USA Airbrush Supply. And I'll leave you the link across the screen here in just a sec, as well as below in the description. Um, I don't own all the types. I do own that 350. I don't like it. It's much more of a detailed spray gun. This one gives me a little bit broader coverage. I mean, I tend to like it a little bit more. Now, one of the things, or a couple of things I'll tell you about this before we get started on a demonstration is, if you increase the pressure coming into it, now somebody said, well, where do you set yours? I set it somewhere between 25 and 40. That's a broad range. Uh, it depends. Probably, you know, try to set it at 25 with your fluid in here. And of course, it depends on the thickness of the fluid or how thin it is, but hit the trigger. If you don't like how it's coming out, reach over and adjust that PSI and come up a little bit more. So the more you increase the pressure, the finer the mist that'll be coming out of this. Now that's one way to control this thing. Um, people c seem to criticize this because they expect it to be like a plug and play thing. Okay, you do have to play with it a little bit. So I gave you a pressure range. Start there, hit the trigger, look at it. Do you like it or don't you like it? And is it going broad or too narrow or what's going on with it? Now there is another adjustment. I originally set mine um, kind of like a dummy proof way. I set it at 25 to 30 somewhere in there, I forgot. And I hit the trigger and I wasn't liking what was going on. Now, this right here is spring loaded tip. As I twist this and I make this tip move up, okay, the mist is gonna get finer until it almost shuts off. As I go down, it's gonna get coarser and bigger. And I just keep playing, now I play with this spring, you're only gonna have to probably do this one time unless you change the viscosity of the fluid in this. But I sat here and I went like this until I got the pattern that I want. You can just shoot it onto a piece of paper, or just look at it and shoot it out in the air. I'm outside of my garage when I do this, I just shoot it and I look at it. It is better to shoot it onto a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood and then look at that spray pattern. And then I just adjust this accordingly. But I would tell you, I leave mine now, I think around 30, 35 PSI. I just play with this and for brushing lacquer thinner, I get a really good result. It's a, it's a really good setup. And then we'll go over the cleaning of it in a little bit, but I'll do a demo for you here in a bit and I'll show you what I mean. Now, let me go ahead and I'm gonna set it up right here in back of me, right here. Now this is a project I have on my lathe. And I've already put a couple of coats, if I keep the flies off of it, damn it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my compressor turned on and we're gonna shoot a coat of lacquer on here. And I'm gonna show you how this works. So give me a second just to set it up. Okay, so I have it all set up. I put fluid in this little container here. I put fluid in there. And I press it. Now I've already put this on a piece of paper and adjusted this right here, the spring loaded tip. I have my pressure set at 30 and this is brushing lacquer. So this is a project just like any kind of wood carving or anything else. So I'm gonna put a coat on there. Okay, now well, I'm gonna come here to the outside and we're gonna do it. I'll do this top part first and I'll blend in the bottom into it. Find a starting point so you know where you started. I overlap 50% as I'm going through this, just like this. Okay, and I'm back to that starting point. Now, I like lacquer for a reason. Each coat of lacquer burns in, they call it burn in. It burns into the previous uh, coat of lacquer I put on. And I can keep building up coats of lacquer and I can do it kind of quickly because lacquer dries very quickly. But this is about the badger for the moment. So I find a starting point, overlap 50%, and I just turn the project like this. Now you're gonna go through these little jars of fluid, but they're good for small projects and you're gonna have to keep, you know, re-putting it in each time. And I just go like this. And I had enough to put one good coat on there. And there it is. 
okay? Now, let's talk about the cleanup of this badger, okay? This is where you get the tips and tricks from. Give me just a sec to set it up and I'll show you. Now, I get a small container of lacquer thinner right here. This is just a water bottle I cut off and uh, I wouldn't leave it in there, it'll probably eat through it. But for the moment, it hasn't, and I've used this over and over, but lacquer thinner. Okay, so I get my spray gun. It's right here. Let's see. I get the spray gun, I unscrew it. I just set the tip into there and press it and hold it up out of the way. And I run that lacquer thinner through there. Now, I dip this whole thing up to the tip in there just to get everything good and cleaned off. Okay, now, out at Harbor Freight, you can get these little acid brushes, okay? They're cheap. You can get like a whole bunch of them for next to nothing. And I go ahead and I just scrub down everything with it because I want to get that lacquer off of there. Now it's a good idea, I learned this in the beginning, there's a seal in here. That's a good idea, I learned this in the beginning, there's a seal in here. Take the seal out, clean this whole thing off. Don't get it up on the trigger mechanism up right here. Okay, don't do that. The reason why is what you're gonna end up doing, there's a little rubber seal in there and it'll ruin it. So don't submerge this whole thing because I've seen people do that. Then they criticize the gun as a piece of junk because you know it failed on them. A little rubber seal, you don't want it to get damaged and if you continually soak this in solvents, that's what'll happen. So I'll just stick that pickup tube and there we go. And that's about all I do to clean this up. Now, the other thing that you can do, say you're having trouble with the spraying on this thing. I have a needle. I just run the needle down through the very tip of this. You could use a paper clip on the pickup tube, but for this, you're gonna need a needle. And I just go up and down like this. And again, just to get all the particles out, hit it a couple of times. And that's it, and this thing's good and clean. Okay, so I'm gonna pan back. Look, watch. Good and clean. Now I'm gonna pan back, and you clean up the jar the same way, this little jar. I'm not done using it, I'm gonna put more lacquer in it, and I'm gonna spray more. When you're done, I just sink this whole glass jar into that lacquer thinner, swirl it around, clean it up, pull it out, let it dry off. I'll be right back. All right, so that was a quick demo. Let's go over some questions and answers. Okay, definitely you don't submerge that trigger into any cleaning solvent. That's bad for those seals, don't do it. That's probably how I ruined the first one that I had. It creates seal damage, it's that simple. And try to take that inner seal ring out of the bottom of the cap. Uh, it's in here. I would just remove it then clean your gun. I mean, like I told you, the best you can. This one was a little sticky. I'm just putting a little extra lacquer thinner on there. Um, okay, so let's see, what else? Um, pickup tube, you can use a paper clip and ram it up and down that clear, uh, semi-clear pickup tube. That clears it out, soak it in uh, lacquer thinner and you're home free, it won't hurt anything needle through the tip. I mean, that's really the best way. You just use a needle, a little sewing needle or something, and just go up and down real quick. That clears it right on out. Um, replacement tubing. Now, somebody said, hey, you can use aquarium tubing. I got some aquarium tubing. Um, I even went out to PetSmart and took a look at their aquarium tubing. It doesn't fit right. It doesn't fit real well. So, I don't have a source yet. Um, I have written to USA Airbrush Supply to try to get a source for more pickup tubes, uh, so I don't have that yet. I'll let you know, I mean, if I do, but uh, you know. And I have different size jars. You can get those off USA Airbrush or Amazon. I'll leave you the link. These are the small ones. This is what it comes with. These are the medium sized ones. They will fit fine on the Badger 250. 
When you go to the larger Badger spray gun, and I have it here, I don't have a pickup tube yet, but it's the same, it just holds more fluid, then you can get into the bigger jars that hold much more of your finish. So this depends on how you want to do the setup. There's three different jar sizes. Two of them work on the Badger 250. The other one is meant for the larger uh, Badger spray gun. It works the exact same way, single action, as the 250. Um, so you adjust the sprayer, everything is the same way. What I didn't like about that 350, they also give you like this little tiny cheapo wrench for tightening different things. And I went through that, but I just found that the mist was, uh, it works good for detail projects, maybe, I don't know, tattooing, pin striping, something like that. It wasn't working for me on hobby projects. What works best for me is this 250 series with, the, you know, that's me. So it's usaairbrushsupply.com. Now, there are certain accessory items you can buy from there that are going to be much cheaper than Amazon. Um, so I would tell you check both websites before you make a purchase. The guns themselves are the same price virtually, but all the accessories, of course, are different prices. So I would check the different prices. So your quick tips are in the cleaning aspect of this. Um, setting the pressure one more time between 25 and 40. I usually go 30, 35 using brushing lacquer. Um, other things, different thicknesses, you might have to adjust the pressure and you might have to adjust that tip like I told you. It just depends. Spray it on a piece of cardboard and you'll figure it out. Uh, what else? So I told you how to clean the tip, I told you how to clean the pickup tube. Just get everything super clean. Use these cheap acid brushes out at Harbor Freight and use them in a small container of lacquer thinner. You can clean this thing up fast, set it to the side, it'll be ready to go next time. Um, this is probably my, my third video on this Badger series of uh, airbrushes, but for a cheap airbrush, single action, these things are great. Um, this is my third purchase. I bought one, failed, bought another one, which we just demoed, and I bought the larger one, but I need a longer pickup tube. So if anybody has any ideas on where to get the pickup tubes, um, I think they're made out of a stronger material than aquarium tubing anyway and they're not as pliable, they're a little bit stiffer. You know, drop me a link below, let me know. Um, but this is like your quick tip of the day on using the Badger single action spray brushes. I'll drop the links below. I hope you click subscribe, continue following me. I hope this answers the questions for the people that asked me on the forum. You're having all this difficulty, it doesn't spray right, it spits, it sputters, it does this, it does that. I think it's all in, you're not cleaning it properly when you're done before the next use. Clean this thing real well, keep the needle handy, because even when you're spraying, if you're spraying for a length of time, the tip and you're stopping to let the lacquer dry, then you're coming back to it, and then you're stopping to let the lacquer dry, and then you're coming back to it, it can start to gum up the tip. So you use the acid brush and you just swipe the tip of that by dipping it in the lacquer thinner, swipe it off real good, run the needle up and down, boom, you're right back in business. If that doesn't work, take it apart, you know, clean the pickup tube, clean the whole thing up with lacquer thinner, spray lacquer thinner through it, screw it back on the jar, boom, you're back into business. Okay, I'm the home handyman. This will work on carved out discs, or carved, I'm sorry, carved out bulls as well as what you saw on the lathe turning. It's the same concept. They work great as a hobby airbrush. I'm the home handyman. I hope you click subscribe. Follow me on the next video. I'll talk to you folks again soon. Bye-bye.